Would you like a home that is layered with timeless character and charm? Well, join me today as I travel through the cornfields of central Illinois to shop for vintage treasures in a small farming community. I'll show you what to look for and I'll share several creative ideas for styling and using vintage finds in your home. Shopping vintage has so many advantages. Items are often unique, high quality, and affordable, giving your home a sense of history and a timeless appeal. So whether you're a seasoned thrifter or just starting out, get ready to be inspired and discover the joy of finding and styling vintage treasures. Are you ready? Then let's get started. You can often identify a good small town thrift store by the quality furniture on the front sidewalk. Vintage furniture adds character and timeless style to your home decor. Oh my gosh, look at the beautiful wood carving on this chair. I didn't buy that pretty chair because I simply don't have room for even one more chair in my home but I did buy this pretty side table for only $3 because it was missing a little bit of the fretwork on one side. The legs were also a little wobbly, but it just needed to have its screws tightened. I cleaned the table really well with liquid sandpaper, and then I painted it with two coats of Tate Green chalk paint. I knew there was a chance that the dark wood stain would bleed through my chalk paint, but I chose not to prime because when I distress later, I wanted to be able to see the dark wood stain and not the primer. As it turns out, I got lucky and there was no bleed through. When my second coat of paint was dry, I distressed all of the edges on the table with sandpaper and then I applied a coat of clear wax to seal and protect the paint finish. I'm using the table as a nightstand on my side of the bed. I put the side with the missing fretwork facing the wall and you don't even notice it at all. My husband was still using the nightstand that came with our original bedroom set and it was blocking the lower portion of the bookcase so I gave him my old nightstand. Vintage accessories evoke such a sense of nostalgia. I am always so excited when I come to this store because I never know what I'm going to find. These little wood shoes are too cute. They're coming home with me. I already have way too many glass bottles, but Look at those tiny deer. Oh, how adorable is this little silver clam shell. If you didn't know this about me, I grew up in Illinois and I am a huge fan of Abraham Lincoln. I'm adding this miniature bust to the bookshelf with my Abraham Lincoln biographies. I hope that one day I'll come across a large bust of Lincoln, and hopefully it will actually look like him. I'm pretty sure that the tiny deer would have gotten lost on my large bookcases, so instead I place them on this shelf just below my fireplace mantle, where they're sure to be seen. I spotted this vintage figurine as I was headed to the checkout, and I just love how faded and aged it looks. I think it might be an old chalk piece. I had hoped to learn something about it online, but I couldn't find anything, in part because I can't read the markings. So if anyone knows anything about it, please let me know. The boy's hat was badly chipped, so I decided to touch it up with just a bit of black paint to make it a little less noticeable. I found this chippy white candle stand. It's not actually vintage, but it has a great vintage look anyway. I actually want to use it as a riser and have the larger scalloped base at the top. 
For this to work, I needed to create a new, larger base so that it wouldn't easily topple over. I found an oval-shaped piece of wood in my stash that I thought would work. I sanded down the top a bit so that the glue would have better adhesion. I traced out where I wanted the candle stand to go on the piece of wood and then applied a combination of super glue and Gorilla Glue to adhere the top of the candlestick to the new base. Then I painted over the wood with a mixture of ivory chalk paint and salt wash to give it a similar chippy texture to the candlestick. When the salt wash paint was dry, I used a stiff stenciling brush to dab on some gray and green chalk paint to try to match the colors of the candlestick. I hadn't updated my mantle since early spring, and I thought it was about time I removed the birdhouses. So I did a little rearranging and added the riser with a small bundle of dried flowers displayed on top. Although most people probably consider clocks another type of decorative accessory, in my opinion, they deserve a category all by themselves. And I always have room for a new clock. I don't usually like anniversary clocks, but this floral design on the black background is actually really pretty. I can't believe I came home without a clock. This wall clock would have looked so good painted, and I really regret not purchasing this unique floor clock. What was I thinking? Vintage books used as decor add great visual interest, and as a side bonus, you could always read them. Love this soft leather book the works of Guy de Maupassant. He's the author of The Necklace, one of my favorite short stories. So here are the books that I purchased. I found several small red books, and I found a tiny child's prayer book with a beautiful cover. Vintage baskets have a level of craftsmanship that you just don't find in modern baskets. It's pretty dark in this corner of the store, but I have to look through the baskets. Oh, look at how cute this little basket is. Look at this little handled basket that I purchased. The delicate weaving is just incredible. I'm going to place this basket on my bookcase and stage it with some of the other things that I found, including the little set of red books and a faux fern, which clearly is not that old, but still looks great when staged with these other vintage items. I love how the red bands on the basket pop when the basket's used alongside the red books and the red shoes. My newest favorite thing to look for is vintage artwork, but it is actually really hard to find. As you can tell in this store, there are piles and piles of wall art. Luckily, you can usually spot the good stuff by the vintage frames. Here's a beautiful frame, but sadly no artwork. Oh look, here's a pretty cardboard print, but it's got a few scratches. You know I love round frames, so I'll be getting these. Oh my gosh, these might be the find of the day. Love, love, love these little portraits with the velvet background. Absolutely gorgeous. I decided to hang the vintage portraits on the back wall of the bookcase behind the wicker basket, and I think they look perfect together. I swear the velvet is the exact same shade of red as the stripe in the basket.
I found this small landscape print that I wanted to use in my family room, but I wanted to use a larger frame. I found this newer frame that I thought would work nicely. I stained it with some antiquing wax to disguise the scratches, and then I cut the print to fit inside. This had originally been a tabletop frame, so I covered over the back with extra cardboard and paper packing tape and added a sawtooth hanger. I think it pairs nicely with this other print in my family room. Vintage kitchenware can add a charming and functional touch to your kitchen or dining room. Look at all the kitchenware! I'm sorry if the camera is shaky. I am not very good at filming and talking at the same time, especially when I am just so excited to be here. Okay, I have never seen anything like this. Look at that. Those are napkin rings. They don't want to come off, though. Does anybody have any idea what this is? I have no clue. Look at all those salt and pepper shakers. Oh, I love those old tins up on the top of the bookcase. What? <laughs> A potato salt and pepper? I bought some chinoiserie themed kitchen items a round metal serving tray, ceramic handled serveware, and a tile trivet. I absolutely love the tray as a backdrop in my china cabinet. I put the trivet on the stove to use as a spoon rest, and I added the wooden spoon and fork to a small vase on the counter to show off their pretty handles. Don't forget to check out the outdoor and gardening supplies. I love these little blue and white pots, but I'm not sure why they have holes on the sides. Luckily, I did find one adorable square blue and white pot that I'm going to display on my stove for now. I absolutely love how this area of my kitchen looks with all my vintage finds. When thrifting, don't forget to look for quilts, embroidered linens, and other nostalgic textiles. I bought some crochet doilies, a vintage tea towel, and some napkins. I'm not sure how I'm going to use these two small quilted coverlets, but they were just too cute to pass up. However, I did make use of some of the other textiles. After adding my new vintage masher to this cutting board bowl, I also added in a vintage napkin for color and textural contrast. Nothing adds elegance to home decor quite like vintage china. Look at all the milk glass. Seriously, have you ever seen this much milk glass in one place before? Oh, look at that. You know this is coming home with me. Okay, forget about the milk glass. I have just found the blue and white china heaven. These are really cute little coffee cups. The only problem with vintage mugs is that they just don't hold very much, so I would be refilling them all the time. Music 
using vintage items in ways other than their intended purpose can add an element of quirkiness and surprise to your decor. Even though I said I didn't need any more glass bottles, I couldn't resist these blue ones. I just wonder what was in them. This is actually the first time I've been able to walk down this aisle. It's usually blocked with suitcases and wood boxes. Oh, look at this cute drawer. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, look at that trunk. You probably expected me to paint or upcycle the two small drawers, and I might in the future. However, for now, I like the natural wood. I want to stack them and use them as a base for a small display in my china cabinet. I think mixing in some wood items balances the cool tones of the blue, white, and silver pieces. I also mixed in a vintage tea towel and napkin to add some textural contrast to all the hard surfaces. I'm not sure if my use of this floral hook is technically repurposing, but I did use it in an unexpected way by attaching it to my china cabinet and hanging a vintage creamer from the hook. Architectural salvage can serve as a unique focal point, and conversation piece in your home. I bought this empty frame that was missing its mirror. I believe that it went with a buffet. Unfortunately, at some point, someone had decided to paint it red. In the future, I may try to strip it back down to its natural wood, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and paint it with the same Tate Green chalk paint that I used on the nightstand, because this piece is going in my bedroom too. It took three coats to cover that dark red paint. And when the paint was dry, I distressed the piece using some sandpaper, and then I sealed the paint with clear wax. Vintage suitcases and trunks add a sense of history and serve as versatile storage pieces. This is a nice suitcase, and it's actually leather. I regret not buying that leather suitcase, but I did buy this cute trunk. I've never seen a small one like this. I'm going to use it on the left side of my fireplace hearth, to balance out the vintage shelf that I recently added to the right side of the hearth. Vintage lamps offer distinctive designs, craftsmanship, and materials that you just don't find in today's mass-produced lighting fixtures. The lamps in my family room are very farmhouse in style, and I've wanted something different for a long time now, but I just really don't know exactly what I do want. I guess I'm hoping that one day I'll just see something and I'll know. Yeah, that's it. That's the lamp I've been looking for. I don't even really like mid-century modern, but this lamp is amazing. Somebody is going to be so happy when they find this. I did end up buying this brass-ish lamp. I'm pretty sure it's not real brass, but it's a good fake. 
and I liked the size and shape, and I liked the price. It was a little bit wobbly, so I carefully removed the felt bottom so that I could tighten the screw on the center rod that holds everything together. Once I had tightened the nut, I hot glued the felt back in place. There were a few scratches with silver metal showing through, so I disguised them by dabbing on some antique gold rub and buff. I tried out several different lampshades from my stash and ended up liking the large linen one the best, but it was a bit too tall, showing a few inches of what I call the lamp neck. So I traded out the harp for a shorter one. Now you can only see about an inch of the neck. I am so happy with this lamp. I think it looks fantastic next to my William Morris drapes. I'd love to know which one of these vintage items would have come home with you and which one would have stayed on the store shelves. And if you like vintage items like these, be sure to check out my online store, CanterburyCottageShop.com. Thank you so much for watching today. See you next week.